They were the whispers of ancient people carrying messages from thousands of years ago found in corners of the world. They built some in circles, some in triangles, and some as pyramids. We were witnessing the epic story of a tradition thousands of years old. This story was so great that even modern man couldn't agree on the wonders of their constructions. Yes, I am talking about the ancient people and their ancient structures. Today, however, we are going on a wonderful journey, not to them, but to the way they built, to their ancient technologies, the mysteries of the pyramids of Giza, the riddle of Stonehenge, the secrets of Gobekli Te, the ancient warfare of the Inca temples. Yes, all these ancient structures, all these artifacts and statues, the massive engravings on columns whose purpose we still cannot fathom, were created by a single hand, a single mind. This ancient technology, thousands, even millions of years old, was built in a single center before spreading to all corners of the world. The rest we already know. From this center, mankind spread to all corners of the world, carrying this ancient technology and leaving their mark. Yes, today we call these marks pyramids, Stonehenge or Gobekli Tepe. We try to understand their mysteries and secrets. We try to understand their mathematics. Perhaps we wonder which gods or kings these structures were dedicated to, but we always miss one detail, that all these ancient structures, all these ancient artifacts whose names we can't even name, had something in common. This ancient common language, this ancient common language, this ancient common knowledge. And today, our task will be to listen to the tunes of this story that has been told for thousands of years. Archaeology, paleography, numismatics, philology, anthropology. These branches of modern science have tried to understand their secrets and the whispers of the ancients throughout history. Sometimes they have succeeded, but when we look at the bigger picture, the result has often been disappointment. Usually we decipher their language, we read what they have to say, but we don't understand anything from what we read. This is because modern science works with a theoretical system and seeks definite results. But the ancients, who had ancients who had ancient technology and knowledge, knew very well that this was not the way to find the right path. So today, on our ancient journey, as we examine ancient structures and artifacts, we will not approach them theoretically, as modern science does, but with a mythological perspective. We will set aside for a day what modern mathematics, science, and history have to say and try to understand these structures and artifacts through the mythological language of the people who built them. And perhaps, if we are lucky, we will come a step closer to ancient wisdom and knowledge through their eyes. Our first guide will be a Sumerian tablet, translated verbatim by an anthropology expert called Sasha Alex Lesson, in which Anu and the Anunnaki are the main characters, because this tablet will provide us with such information that we will then be able to look at all the ancient structures we are investigating with a new perspective. Let's take a look at the first sentence of the Sumerian tablet we are going to study. At dawn each day there is an increase in the solar wind, which strengthens the Earth's geomagnetic field. At night, this field weakens and then strengthens again at dawn. This is a cycle, and the effect of this increasing magnetism at each dawn tends to become permanent in regions, where it encounters another force. Of course, the Sumerians did not write this in such scientific terms or beautiful prose. But translated by an anthropologist, this is how the text can be read today. Let's look at this sentence again. What did the Sumerians say on the tablet containing the Anunnaki myths? At every dawn, that is, at sunrise, the Earth's magnetic field increases and decreases at night. Okay, we understand this sentence very well. Let's go on. It's a cycle and it continues to increase at dawn and decrease at night. But when this magnetic field meets another force, it is ready to become permanent in those regions, according to the Sumerian Anunnaki writings. So, 
as we understand it, when the Earth's magnetic field encounters another force, it transforms the regions it encounters into places we now know as Earth energy points. Let's think. Didn't we already know this? We call the places where different energies of the Earth, including magnetism, intersect Earth energy points. Modern science calls these points the Hartman grid. In the last decade, we have come to know very well that these points exist and that when they converge, they form the Earth's energy fault line. But the fact that this information was written on a mythological tablet thousands of years ago was proof that we were on the right track. Both ancient mythology and modern science together confirmed the existence of energy points. In the video I recently posted on my channel called Earth's Energy Points, you can see how all the ancient structures, especially Goba Plipe and the pyramids, were built on these energy points. Yes, indeed, among the building instructions found in the Anunnaki mythologies of the Sumerians, great importance was attached to all structures being located on these energy points prior to construction. So it's time to ask the first question of the video. How could these ancient people who lived thousands of years ago know about the Earth's energy points, which modern mankind has only discovered in the last decade thanks to advanced technology and radar? How did they know about the flow of energy on the Earth and that these energies could be concentrated at certain points? This is the main question we should ask ourselves. Because as soon as we close our eyes, we remember the migration map of ancient technology throughout history as described by the history encyclopedias we read, the ancient mythology tablets and their cultures. Let's start at the beginning. The civilization that gave us this information was the Sumerians. The Sumerians were the last stop of ancient technology as we know it, but this knowledge came from ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt had produced many structures and artifacts using this ancient knowledge. And we know very well one of them called Giza pyramids. But when we asked how this ancient knowledge came to Egypt, we had to remember the tablets of the Book of the Dead, the Enuma Elish epics, and even the representations in Egyptian hieroglyphics. Because no matter which argument we looked at, we would get a single answer. This ancient knowledge that came to ancient Egypt had come with the Atlanteans who survived the sinking of the continent of Atlantis. So ancient Egypt, using the ancient knowledge and technology inherited from Atlantis, created the structures and technologies that are legendary to this day. Yes, the place where it all began, where all ancient knowledge was born, was Atlantis, which we now know lies under the sea. And the Sumerian Anunnaki tablets that we read at the beginning of the video were supposed to describe that place. Because in many mythologies, we know that the Anunnaki lived on Atlantis for millions of years, establishing bases and homes there. The people of Atlantis were a people of Atlantis, were a people educated and taught by the Anunnaki, transformed into the people of the Age of Knowledge. We already knew this from dozens of different mythologies and dozens of different tablet inscriptions. This means that the pyramids, Stonehenge, Gobaklite, Mayan columns, Inca temples, all these ancient structures located at the energy points of the earth were built with their technology, the ancient knowledge of the ancient knowledge of the Anunnaki. We don't know if the Anunnaki themselves built them, but whoever built them did so with the knowledge and ancient technology of the Anunnaki. So what was the ancient knowledge that the Anunnaki left to humanity for the construction of these energy structures like? Was it like the buildings, roads and bridges we build today? Or if we all got up today and found a vacant lot in Istanbul, Izmir or Ankara, and built a pyramid-shaped structure there, would we have access to the ancient knowledge of the ancient knowledge of the Anunnaki? Seriously, what did the ancient knowledge and technology used by the Anunnaki and their structures mean? The first thing we need to know is that none of the structures they built were magical or enchanted. They believed more in the energy of the earth than in magic and enchantment. They used this energy so skillfully 
that even after thousands of years we couldn't agree on their structures or why they were built. We could only marvel at the mystery of these structures. However, the ancient people who were students of the Anunnaki, especially the Sumerians, left many clues. And one of these clues, a Sumerian tablet, gave us the five main elements, the five common features that must be present in structures built with the ancient technology and knowledge of the ancient technology and knowledge of the Anunnaki. So let's take a closer look at these five elements together. The first element of a structure to be built with the sacred technology was water, the first element of life. Because with the ancient knowledge, they recorded all knowledge and energy in water. Water was a perfect conductor for them. Often a metal rod or plate would be made to contact this water, and by also using the Earth's magnetic energy, they would generate perhaps an electric current, perhaps artificial magnetism, or a sacred energy power beyond our current understanding. Yes, we know they did this with the Giza pyramids in Egypt. Because let's not forget, thanks to the technology I've described in many videos before, even though they no longer exist, there were obelisks on either side of the pyramids in the past. At the very bottom of these obelisks, which reached lengths of 30 to 40 meters, there was a small water basin to collect rainwater. And in the middle of the water basin, there was a metal plate that went through the whole obelisk. And so whatever their goal was, they achieved it with this technology, similar to the generation of electricity. Another piece of information we can give about the first element of the ancient technology of the Anunnaki Water is the connection to water of all those ancient structures whose secrets we have not yet been able to unravel and which we believe to have been inherited from them. For example, one of mankind's most important ancient structures, Stonehenge, was built between the English and Bristol canals. Gobekli Tipe was only a few kilometers from the Euphrates River, where all of ancient Mesopotamia was located. Even the Giza pyramids in Egypt, although built in the middle of the desert, were very close to the Nile, and we had already discovered that water channels ran under these pyramids. Therefore, we could easily link the use of water sources found in these three structures and dozens of other unnamed ancient structures to the Anunnaki tablets. The only thing we were sure of was that all the ancient structures had a water-based system. For just as three quarters of the earth is water, so much of the human body is water. Water holds knowledge. It holds the teachings of the earth, energy, history, and ancient knowledge. It holds the teachings of nature. And if you believe in a theory that all life began with water, then life was created that way. Of course, in this video where we are discussing ancient knowledge, it would be impossible for the Anunnaki not to mention water. The second element of the energy structures according to the Anunnaki narratives written by the Sumerians as we learned at the beginning of the video was magnetism because magnetism, a natural variation of the earth, was one of the main building blocks of their ancient knowledge. They built all their structures in these places, lived on these magnetic fields and enlightened humanity from there because the earth's magnetic field allowed them to achieve whatever they wanted to achieve with their ancient knowledge. If their goal was space, and we know from the star maps and alignments found in ancient structures that their goal was indeed space, they achieved this space. They achieved this space, Earth communication by using the Earth's magnetic field, building on energy points, and aligning their structures according to star. Alignments. And let's not forget, the Anunnaki were a space race. And as far as we can tell from all these elements, they were training Earth's life forms for space links. Therefore, according to the ancient technology of the Anunnaki, in order to construct an energy structure, one must possess the magnetic power of the Earth. Moreover, in recent months, the famous geobiologist Blanche Mears, as a result of his research on the energy points of the Earth, known in science as the Hartman Grid, confessed with a scientific perspective that the areas where ancient structures and temples were located were magnetic tension points. Yes, the ancients were not wrong. They had already learned the real truth with the compass of the Anunnaki. 
Now that we have learned how important water and magnetism are for structures built with the ancient technology of the Anunnaki, let's move on to the third and one of the most important elements. Our current element will be the stones used in these ancient structures, or rather the stones that should be used. As you know, whether it's the pyramids, ancient temples, or structures built in a circular orbit like Stonehenge, they all display ore, inspiring stone craftsmanship and stone architecture. We were captivated by the magic of this architecture as soon as we entered the site of these ancient structures. We often asked ourselves, how did they build these massive structures thousands of years ago? The real point we should be thinking about at this moment is the building materials used in these ancient structures. Because none of the civilizations that built the pyramids or the ancient temples used any random materials or stones to build these structures, all the materials used in these sacred ancient structures were carefully selected and used for specific purposes. Those who follow Ilhan Yilmaz's channel will already know from the ancient structures videos I've published over the past few months what these materials were, but for those who don't, let's recap the main materials of the ancient technology inherited from the Anunnaki. What were these stones and materials? Yes. I hear those who gave the correct answer, of course. Those materials were quartz crystal and stardust. Ancient mankind used these two main components in almost all their structures. They built all their structures with these two main components. In fact, for those of us who have watched the videos on the Giza pyramids, Stonehenge or Gobekli Tepe published on my channel, we have already learned that these structures use stardust and quartz crystal, and that this fact has also been proven by archaeologists. Of course, it was no coincidence that these two main components were used in all ancient structures. When stardust and quartz crystal interacted with the third building material, they produced a compound that achieved the highest transmission speed. And if we look at the other elements described in the Sumerian tablets, such as water and magnetism, when these two elements interacted with stones made with quartz crystal and stardust, they produced the ultimate force that transmitted energy at the fastest rate. They called this the soul of the earth, while modern science calls it resonance. Furthermore, archaeological research conducted in the areas where ancient structures were located showed that the building materials of ancient structures were brought from miles away and built with quartz crystals and other components. This is because stones made with quartz crystal and stardust and ancient structures built with these stones would be in resonance with the earth's magnetic field. And let's not forget, it has been scientifically proven that many of these structures have star alignments. And now we come to the fourth element of the ancient Anunnaki technologies. The fourth element is perhaps the most important of all the requirements of these ancient structures. For if we find that this element is missing from an ancient structure, we would understand that it is not a product of ancient technology. What was it called? It was, of course, sacred geometry. Sacred geometry was such an element that even the philosophers of past ages thought long and hard about it, and now a whole branch of science studies it in detail. It was the most important knowledge of antiquity. Those of us who remember the symbols and signs inherited from the Atlanteans would have more or less understood what ancient geometry was, because these geometric shapes which were almost the alphabet of the Atlantean peoples, would create the ancient geometry thousands, millions of years later. The first shape within this geometry was called the angles on human temples in the Sumerian tablets. Yes, this was, as we can all guess, a triangle. According to the Sumerian tablets, sacred geometry symbols were used to open up the circuits in the human body and make them suitable for low frequencies. In this way, people who could resonate with the universe would become sentient manipulators. In addition, if we look at humans at a molecular level, we already know that all molecules that make up matter have a geometry. For example, DNA consists of four bases, formed by the sum of pentagonal and hexagonal bonds. Yes, as you can see, even with our smallest cells, we were created as part of this sacred geometry. 
So how would we recognize the geometry found in ancient structures? Of course, by seeing how they use the resonant power created by magnetism more efficiently, because pyramid shapes, spheres, and circle symbols would allow the artificially created magnetic power to concentrate in a single center without scattering. And we know very well that the Egyptian pyramids, as you can understand from their name, were built in the shape of a pyramid. But many rooms inside them were built in circular or triangular shapes. Let's not forget that Stonehenge and Gobekli belong to an ancient class of structures called cycles. So what does that mean? It means ancient structures built in a circular shape. In fact, if we look today at structures that are very important to divine religions like Islam and Christianity, wouldn't we see this sacred geometry? Because almost all of them contain square, triangular or pentang square, triangular or pentagonal structures built within a circular area. Therefore, the most important element of ancient building knowledge that the Anunnaki taught to ancient mankind was this sacred geometry. For they were able to distribute or concentrate the energy they produced using artificial resonance and geometry. And since they used this to resonate humans, all that remained was to find the most appropriate form for the human body, which was itself a geometry. And now, after water, magnetism, building stones and sacred geometry, Let's move on to the last element of ancient Anunnaki knowledge. The last task that ancient people who built an ancient structure and used it for thousands of years had to carry out. This last element was such an element that we don't need to know or understand the Anunnaki. Nor do we need to be expert archaeologists. Because the last element of ancient building knowledge inherited from the Anunnaki was human intent. Yes, you heard right. Human intent. You can interpret this as a term from modern religions. But no, this last element was the last element of a mythology thousands of years old. Because according to the information in the Sumerian inscriptions, if we want to create an ancient resonance using ancient technology and knowledge, or build an ancient structure, we must first question our intention. Yes, I am not saying this nor is any of those popular knowledge magazines. The Sumerians gave us this information literally, because according to them, when we build an ancient structure or visit an ancient structure that has already been built, we must be aware of our intention, just as the ancients did. For this ancient knowledge, an Ananaki teaching commanded that all sacred structures be built according to its teachings and its elements. The last of these was the importance of intention. The Sumerian tablets emphasize the meaning of the word intention with the following sentence. The dirt of the earth, the water of the earth, and the mud of the earth came together and stone was laid upon stone. One piece was missing, the idea that would unite the soul of the clay with the soul of the clay with the soul of the clay with the soul of the earth felt and spoken by man. This sentence was verbatim, the lines that questioned the intent of the ancients, and probably when we look up at the earth and see all the pyramids, ancient structures and temples, they were built with a faithful intention, as the Anunnaki teachings demanded, as the Sumerian tablets said. And in this way, all those ancient people, by going to the structures they built with their hands, made their souls equal to the soul of the earth. Yes, this action was called ancient knowledge, reaching the level of ancient knowledge. All that ancient level that the Anunnaki had taught the humanity of Earth had returned with structures, thoughts, and technologies over thousands of years. But we were the forgetful ones. We admired the pyramids, studied them for hours, pondered them. But we couldn't see that they were a product of ancient technology. Yes, now we had the five elements that made up the ancient knowledge of building. Water, magnetism, building stones, sacred geometry, and human intention. What do you say? Shall we start building a new pyramid tomorrow? Joking aside, but this ancient teaching, which reached us through the Sumerian tablets and allowed us to ponder it at length today, was the legacy of the Anunnaki to mankind. And today, 
As the last emissaries of this legacy left us, the whole of humanity, we learned the immense ancient knowledge behind the structures that we still don't understand how and why they were built. We discovered how little we knew within this vast ancient knowledge. In one way or another, they were the inventors of the ancient structures that were spread all over the world. They had turned the earth into a great machine. They had transformed the whole world into knowledge, resonating with each other and in harmony with the creative power of nature. All that remains for us is to perhaps one day go to Stonehenge, the pyramids, or closer to Gobekleipe, and then post them beautifully on social media. Then we would call the device in our hands technology, while the real ancient technology of true history was in front of us.